Welcome to the channel. My name is Matt. This channel is meant to help you maximize your time on the road on your favorite side hustle. And to do that, we're going to look at the past six months. What has changed since last year and some key things that you need to know as a driver to maximize your earnings. And we have a very special guest today, none other than my twin brother on the original channel, your driver, Mike. So we're going to break it down today and go over what we learned over the past six months since the year started. Mike, thanks for joining. Absolutely. I was just driving out there as were you. We got hit with that rain a little bit, but uh, there's a lot of uh, new things going on. So I'm excited to talk about it. Awesome. Fantastic. Really looking forward to it. So really the real thing that we're going to break down today, there's been so many changes since the year has started with new apps, trying different features, fares changing, popularity of certain apps have changed. Let's just dive into it. What do you think is one of the big takeaways over the past six months where we've looked at January and we've said, what can drivers expect? So why don't you send out a big message to everyone watching right now? Maybe you're considering signing up for a side hustle like DoorDash or Uber Eats. And we're going to tell you, well, what should you expect? Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to start or grow a side hustle this year, um, if you're just starting or if you did start, you know, maybe December of 2020, January of this year, there were a lot of things that changed across a lot of these apps here. You know, uh, Matt, you know, you drive uh, primarily on DoorDash, with Grubhub, and of course, some Uber Eats here. Um, I've mainly transitioned to Uber Eats and, you know, saw a lot going on with Postmates. So I'll tell you, you know, if you're watching this and you are new or again, you just started here. I would absolutely look at the apps that are best in your marketplace. Um, actually, just a couple of days ago, for instance, we had all orders on Postmates move over to Uber Eats. So you no longer even have Uber Eats as an option. We have what? DoorDash is still the number one player in the food delivery space with over 50% market share. So that's always good to have. But then also, you've seen really good pay on Grubhub. And I mean, one more point is, I see your comments again over on my channel, your your driver Mike, that you know Uber Eats is the best in my market. But then someone else says Grubhub is the best in my marketplace. And again, of course, someone else says DoorDash. You really have to do your own research. Right, absolutely. So again, what we're talking about is what you need to know, just us looking over the past year, 2021, and what has changed since their really challenging year of 2020. So I totally agree. I think if you're watching and you're thinking, well, I think that DoorDash is big in my, my marketplace, but maybe you're not signed up on Grubhub or you're not yet signed up on Uber Eats and you're hearing other drivers, maybe on this channel on your channel or in the private discord. And they're saying, no, 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 you have to try this different app. I think the whole plan, if I was watching and I'm a new driver or I've been signed up for a while is get used to constant changes. I think that's the main takeaway for me starting this year, whether it's new features that maybe we don't agree with. I'm sure you're watching, there's some feature changes that you haven't agreed with. What do you think about some of these changes and what do you think drivers should really pay attention to moving forward over the next six months? Is it gonna be the same or what do you think? I mean, to your point about things to be concerned about, I mean, the biggest change we've seen on DoorDash, which really is the biggest play in the space, are the contract violations. It's extreme lateness, or it is order never arrived by the customer. And you get too many of those, and you could be deactivated. So that's something that you know we're, of course, closely watching here. We have seen Uber Eats, it's more so mid-early 2020, but they finally showed the customer tip as well in the projected payout. So that's a positive. I mean, if you're watching this here in 2021, I would look at Q3 and Q4 this year. Again, subscribe to Matt's channel right now. Check out mine if you'd like as well. But I say Q3 and Q4 because these companies have specifically stated that they're anticipating a decline in order of volume because, I mean, things are opening up again. You know, you mentioned 2020. It was a very hard year. We had a ton of close, uh, lockdowns and closures of restaurants. We're not going to see that as much. And we're already seeing places reopen. Right, exactly. So good point. It brings me into my next point that I really want to focus on. So you can think if you're watching this, how much money did I typically earn over the challenging year last year or even the first six months? Now, I want to ask you, maybe you're watching and think about 
when's the best time in your marketplace to drive? Is it on the weekends or is it the dinner rush during the week? I mean, when's really that busy time? And Mike, as you said, as we approach summer here, are things going to slow down, down dramatically? And when is the best time to drive? Is it summertime? Are we going to see a huge decline in orders because it's summer, it's nice, people are going out more? Or are we going to see a huge spike in uh, early morning orders for some reason? When's the best time to drive? Morning, dinner rush, um, summertime? What does that typically look like? Yeah, I mean, you and I have driven most every single image shift you can think of, those three rush periods, the breakfast, the lunch rush, and the dinner rush. I, well, I favor the dinner rush uh, firstly, because I mean, if I'm going to order food as a customer, that's generally when I would think is most popular, followed by the lunch rush. Maybe I'm at work, you know, and, and I don't, I don't want to go out or I don't have a lot of time. And then thirdly, I would say the breakfast rush. That's just my experience here. Let us know in the comments if you, if you think anything different here. But I mean, to answer that other point about 2021 projections uh, and, and the weather, you mentioned specifically here, it, it's really hard to tell because, okay, if the weather's nice, maybe I'm going out, I'm doing things. And the last thing I want to do is, you know, cook food. We'll just order something whenever we get home. Or the other side of the coin is, hey, we're out. You know, the restaurants are open. Let's get a nice uh, dinner because it's been so long. So, I mean, again, that's why we're really going to have to closely watch Q3 and Q4. But I do think we're going to see a decline in order volume. I would estimate just a quick educated guess, maybe a 15% drop in order volume. It, it's hard to measure. So again, we have to closely watch that. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, we talk on um, the, my channel and also your channel, your driver, Mike, the weather really does have a play in how many deliveries you get. I've seen it myself. So maybe you're watching and you're, and you're thinking, well, we had a really beautiful Memorial Day uh, this past week. And I've saw very few orders. It really does fluctuate. And especially when it's raining, you get more orders. So I think we all understand that. Um, have we seen any earnings change since last year, maybe because of big changes to a specific app? Do you think that maybe Uber Eats is catching up to DoorDash? Maybe you're watching this video and you're thinking, Matt, uh, I've crushed it on Grubhub this year. Um, Uber Eats has been really slow because of maybe the Postmates acquisition. I've seen, I've heard you guys in the comments section, I've seen a lot more smaller orders. Do you think that the earnings potential has changed since last year, maybe not due to things opening up, but for other reasons? Well, I mean, that's what I'm watching on Uber Eats. So, I mean, again, just a couple of days ago, or it depends when you're watching this here, um, the 7th of, of June, all of those orders from Postmates moved over to Uber Eats. And you know, what we're watching over on my channel is are we going to see more, you know, $3, $4 orders, you know, those throwaway orders. It's going to take, you know, whatever it is, even 20 minutes. It's just that it's throwaway orders at $4 to $5. It's it's basically automatically declining. Um, for hourly earnings, to answer that question. Statistically, I haven't seen a decline in hourly earnings, which I think is good. Maybe you just have to be even smarter as a driver to always decline those throwaway orders. You know what really makes sense in your marketplace to compare bonuses, especially as we've seen pretty consistent bonuses. And again, Grubhub to really decide which is the best for you. But no, uh, at least you know here mid 2021, I haven't seen a statistical uh, correlation to lower hourly earnings. So I just want to bring up a point, and maybe you agree with this, and maybe uh, you've seen this in your marketplace watching. I've read recently that restaurants are having a really tough time bringing people back into work. There's a real problem with staffing these restaurants, and maybe that is causing more orders for uh, Dashers or for Uber Eats or Grubhub, because now they are almost uh, trying to use food delivery to make their money versus in-house dining, even though things are opening up. Maybe the restaurants are shifting their focus on, well, we can make more money even though there are the commissions, right, that restaurants pay for these apps. Have you seen or do you think that maybe we'll see a shift into restaurants focusing more on delivery? Like maybe you've heard Jimmy John's, who is heavily focused on delivery. 
food delivery. What do you think about that shift? I think that kind of speaks to the more macro of the landscape. You know, if you're you know listening to the podcast out there, if you have a heartbeat on the um, or a finger on the heartbeat of you know just the the work industry in general, it's some of these not all of course, but some companies are keeping you know remote work, kind of a pivot to what we've always known here when it comes to work. So if we relate this to the food delivery space, yeah, when you mentioned Jimmy John's here, I'm sure there will be a proponent, a, a proportion rather, of restaurants that do the same in the food delivery space. Now, I don't think we're gonna see too much of a pivot that, you know, hey, this 20% chunk of the industry is moving to delivery only or, or more delivery. But I mean, you made a good point. I mean, restaurants, management, Etc. really have to weigh the literal costs and operations of their restaurants. I mean, it's commission versus overhead, which makes more sense. What do I have more of a demand for? Okay, if I'm opening up my restaurant for more delivery, do I have to pivot my staff as well to focus on prep uh, prepping those orders? Absolutely. No, I totally agree. They're constantly trying to shift and adapt. So just kind of wrapping up that point, what do you think personally, if I'm watching this video and I'm thinking, okay, well, not a lot has uh, specifically changed for me from 2020 to 2021. Now, I think we all can agree 2020 was a challenging year and it just boomed the food delivery industry. So that is unprecedented. But as far as 2021, what would you tell a driver right now? What would their strategy be? Is it more of the same? Is it constantly trying to maybe find that winner per se in your marketplace? So maybe you find that DoorDash is king per se in your marketplace and you want to stick to just DoorDash or do you add variety? What's your overall, if I'm watching this video, I want to make as much money as I can. What would you say? Um, and I know there's a lot of strategy that goes into it, but overall. Well, you know, again, if you're driving in the food delivery space in, in 2021, I would say you can't rely on and certainly do the same things as 2020 because, yeah, I mean, all of these companies really reported record earnings for 2020. You know, we're talking about 100, 200, 300 percent growth. The portfolio of Uber Eats in 2019 was two thirds ride share and it was a third of food delivery. Well, recently in, in their earnings call, uh, I believe just last month or so, they reported the, the inverse of that, of two thirds of their portfolio. Again, this is for Uber, was Uber Eats, and then a third was Rideshare. I mean, with this gig economy, you have to really jump on the hot app or, or niche of the time. I mean, you and I started in 2015 with Rideshare. It was, that was the hot app. It was the hot niche of the time, making we're talking $30 an hour minimum. If you weren't making $30 an hour, you're doing something wrong because we were bringing home $40, $50, $60 an hour. It was just that good. Right. And then you know we pivoted. So if you're watching this video, I would, I mean, again, my general advice to the gig economy for you working in this, in this uh, app-based work is to you know, follow the money, follow the bonuses because bonuses is what's going to help make you the most money and just download the apps. Give them a try. At least you're activated. You have them so you can compare and contrast, maybe try a couple of shifts. And, and again, follow the money to make sure you're not left behind. No, absolutely. I think that's a great point, just following the money, guys. So I really think that um, that's a good strategy, uh, both for last year and this year. So what has changed? There has been some acquisitions. Uh, there has been uh, DoorDash um, changing the app and how it looks and what they show you as far as the tip goes but also adding in some marketplaces a preview of the customer's location so you know where to arrive. There's been a lot of changes, but what hasn't changed is that ability as us as drivers to constantly move from app to app. So as long as that we're approved and, the, and we can move to the one that's uh, best for us. Would you agree? I think that's a pretty solid uh, stay the course on the variety, but know that in 2021, DoorDash has to hang on to that leadership role. Uber Eats is going to be chasing them. So maybe we see, and also Grubhub, maybe we see more incentives, more bonuses for new drivers because they want that marketplace. Who knows? But it's an overall good strategy. Well, I think so. I mean, the whole idea is that you need to diversify as well. So again, you can compare if something gets slow, you can go to this app. 
Because remember, I mean, as an independent contractor, you and I, we have no set allegiance to any app. So remember that. Remember that you are allowed, you have the flexibility to drive for whichever app that you want. You can compare and contrast. You can, you know, you have that flexibility. Absolutely. I really appreciate you being here. Any final thoughts uh, before we kind of uh, land the plane here, as you like to say? Um, any final words? Well, uh, just that, I mean, I would look for what's Matt, what, you know, what you, what, what Matt's saying here, folks, is to get his unique perspective I mean, providing his own take on driving the gig economy. Again, uh, Matt and myself really doing this since 2015 in different marketplaces. And it's really Matt's job and my job to help you make the most money. So, you know, being a part of the team here in general, you know, you meet us halfway, you do your research, you find what's best in your marketplace. You take these best practices as Matt's going to tell you, and we can hopefully help you make the most money. That's absolutely right. Um, skip the uh, research and let us do it for you, right? So make sure to subscribe. And if you do found vi value in these videos, Mike's videos on his channel, go check it out at Your Driver Mike or this channel. Make sure to drop a like, guys. I really appreciate it. And it lets me know that you like this longer form content. So something new here that we're trying on the channel. So until next time, again, my name is Matt. I am Mike's twin brother on my channel, Your Driver Team Matt. Make sure to click the videos recommended to you from YouTube. And of course, we will see you in the next one.